Namaste. Welcome to Flow and Restore Yoga. My name is Michelle Chua, and for today's practice, physically, we'll be focusing on bringing the shoulders into flexion to open them up. Uh, grab a couple of yoga blocks if you have them, a strap, a blanket, and a bolster. And let's start in any comfortable seated position. If it works for you, I invite you to come into hero's pose, something like this, where you have your knees in front of you, no wider than hips distance apart, and you can either sit directly on your calves if that's comfortable, or grab a block to sit on right between the ankles. And just to make sure your knees are safely aligned, try not to turn out or turn in the feet with the toes point back. But as with any of our physical practice of yoga, if anything does not feel appropriate in your body, please do not do it, right? You can find variations of pose because there are so many of each asana. And if one doesn't work for you, then opt out and make sure that you rest anytime your body is asking you to. So with that being said, please take a moment to mentally and physically arrive in your yoga practice. We have been reviewing the various practices of yoga called the eight limbs of yoga as outlined in the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, one of the sacred texts that explains how to practice yoga. And we're now highlighting the third limb which is the physical postures or in Sanskrit called asana. So I'd like to read what one of the yoga sutras or a translation of it about asana. And it's interesting because out of about 198 yoga sutras, only two sutras, maybe three, explain physical practice. So Here's one of them. Perfection in an asana is achieved when the effort to perform it becomes effortless and the infinite being within is reached. I'll repeat it. Perfection in an asana is achieved when the effort to perform it becomes effortless and the infinite being within is reached. And here is an elaboration from Meditations from the Mat. Although Patanjali wrote 196, I'm corrected here, sutras concerning yoga, only two or three of them pertain exclusively to the asana. The first concerns the means, firm, relaxed postures. We talked about that earlier this week. The second concerns the end, effortless oneness with what is. The sutra I just read speaks to the first stumbling block most of us encounter in our practice. We try too hard. Despite the fact that all of us have achieved effortless mastery in many areas of our lives, we come to yoga with cultural baggage that might say we're not enough or never will be. We must improve. We must pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. We must try harder and make some progress. With more effort, we think, and a little more strain, we will get more out of the posture. The mistake is believing that we can get where we are going through effort. Patanjali defines success as effortlessness, floating in the center of our postures, the center of our experience. We succeed by moving into harmony with the moment, our limbs, our breath, our awareness. Note your tendency to try too hard. Note your impulse to push past the point in which harmony is possible. Note what is keeping you from backing off and simply holding the posture at a point in which integrated experience is possible. Make effortlessness your aim. I invite you to take a moment to digest that. You might close the eyes. Observe any sensations in your body. Begin to gather your overall physical state of being. Feel into your breath without controlling it. 
as you observe its qualities, how it's flowing. Notice how your energy feels. And then observing your mind and heart. How are you feeling right now mentally and emotionally? Let's start to breathe in through the nose a little deeper. Opening the mouth to exhale. Again, maybe even deeper, breathing in through the nose. And even slower out through the mouth. Breath by breath, inviting a gently slower breath. What is something right now in any area of your life that you could feel appreciation for? Allowing gratitude to open our heart minds as we begin our yoga practice. And then I invite you to clarify an intention for your practice today. Is there anything that you are opening yourself up to experience? Or in light of the full moon yesterday, is there anything that you are intending to release? Then I invite you to think of somebody else that you could offer up your practice to. Remembering that our practice is not only to serve us, but also the life around us. And together, I invite you to join me in chanting as we open our practice, the sound of interconnection, Om, three times. So let in a deep breath. I invite you to continue to breathe slowly to the very top and to the very bottom. Now balancing the length of in-breath with out-breath as we bring energetic balance into our asana practice. And it's also a way to calm and focus ourselves. It's called ujjayi pranayama. And it's also done by closing your lips, if you can, just breathing through your nose and creating a very soft and smooth whispering sound to the breath that you can listen to as you move and hold postures. That sound is created by gently narrowing the back of your throat. So listen to a few cycles of breath now as you establish a steady, calm rhythm that will eventually move our bodies to in vinyasa flow, the first half of our practice. Let's bring some movement now. So as you root down through your sitting bones, on an inhale, raise your arms overhead. 
and pause here as you breathe. Spin your outer upper arms forward and plug your shoulder blades down the back ribs, sealing in the bottom front ribs. Begin to press the palms together in prayer and try to keep your elbows exactly your shoulders width apart. Start to slide your thumbs down the back of your skull, maybe down the back of your neck. And as you lengthen through the lower back, lifting the back ribs, sealing in the front ribs, you might begin to turn your chest up towards the sky. Just a few more deep breaths here. So our physical practice, like I mentioned earlier, is going to be focusing on bringing the shoulders into flexion, which is what you're doing right now. So keeping the elbows from flaring apart wider than shoulders distance, keep relaxing the shoulders down, rotating the triceps forward. We'll be doing those two actions in downward facing dog in just a moment. So on an exhalation, release the arms and shake out the arms and shoulders. Let's make our way into downward dog, applying this. So spreading your palms, your fingers flat at the top of the mat, Lift your hips high, press your thighs back, and from the shoulder sockets, spin your outer upper arms towards the floor, just like when you had the arms overhead, rotating the triceps forward. Draw the shoulder blades back away from your neck and try to really relax the neck. Maybe it means shaking and nodding the head a few times, even relax the jaw. Lifting the hips, you could bend the knees any amount to create a feeling of a flat back pulling your hips back, firming the belly in, and then allowing a, just a couple more slow breaths through the nose here. Listen to the rhythm. After you exhale, walk or lightly jump to the top of your mat into a standing forward fold. Have your feet at least hips width apart and parallel to each other. Bending the knees generously, with your hands, hold opposite elbows and start to sway your spine gently side to side. Now, even here, as the arms are overhead, the shoulders are in flexion. As you drop your skull, letting the neck hang loose, see if you can float your shoulder heads up away from the neck to create more space in the cervical spine. Breathing in slowly, breathing out slowly. And then release the arms and bend the knees as you inhale to roll up, stacking one vertebra at a time. And as you arrive at the top, circle the shoulders back and down and join your hands in prayer at heart center, reconnecting to your intention for this practice. Continuing our practice of gratitude, let's offer gratitude to the sun with sun salutations, starting with Surya Namaskar C. Inhale, sweep your arms forward and overhead, rolling your shoulders back and down. As you exhale, bow forward from the hips and feel free to bend the knees. Plant your fingertips outside your heels. Inhale, step the left knee behind you to a kneeling lunge look up. As you hold your breath, step into plank pose, top of a push up. Exhale, lower your knees, then your chest, then your chin. Inhale, slide forward onto the belly and soften your shoulders back in cobra pose. Exhale, press up, lifting the hips back to downward facing duck. Inhale, step your left foot beside your left thumb and lower your right knee, gazing up. Exhale, step your right foot forward and fold. Press to the feet. Inhale, sweep your arms forward, rising all the way up. Exhale, join your palms in prayer from crown to heart center. Side two, inhale, sweep the arms forward, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, bow forward, Uttanasana. Plant your fingertips on the ground. Inhale, step the right knee back this time, looking up. Hold your breath as you step to plank. Exhale, lower knees, chest, then chin in Ashtangasana. Inhale, slide through into Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. Exhale, lift your hips back into Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Inhale, step your right foot beside your right thumb. Lower the left knee, look up, Anjaneyasana. Exhale, step the left foot forward and bow. 
rooting down. Inhale, rise, lifting your heart towards the sun. Exhale, join your palms at your heart center. Now entering Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, bow forward, Uttanasana. This time, press your hands on two blocks, your shins or the floor, and inhale to lengthen your spine forward to half forward fold. Then step into your version of plank pose and I invite you to firm the belly. Exhale as you glide forward and lower halfway down, hugging the elbows to your ribs, Chaturanga Dandasana. Then inhale either into cobra or upward facing dog, drawing your shoulders back. Exhale to downward facing dog. Let your body be still as you land your gaze on one point. Tune into one more slow cycle of breath. When you've emptied it, walk or lightly jump to the front of your mat, Uttanasana, forward fold. Press with your hands and lengthen forward to Ardha Uttanasana, half forward fold. Again, Uttanasana, root down, inhale, rise, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, join your hands in prayer. Padasana. Let's step the feet together to enter Surya Namaskar B, which begins with chair pose. So let the big toes touch and on an inhale, bend your knees together, sitting towards your heels as you raise your arms in Utkatasana. Exhale, shift forward and fold Uttanasana. Inhale, half fold, Ardha Uttanasana. Either step to plank or lightly jump to Chaturanga or lower knees, chest, chin. Take it to your vinyasa of choice. Now from downward facing dog, inhale, raise your right leg back. Exhale, step the foot lightly beside your right thumb and spin the left heel down. Inhale, rise up to warrior one, and let's pause here. We're gonna take a little scenic route. Bend your elbows apart. Keep your hips equally facing forward. How is your breath? So in these postures and transitions, I invite you to cultivate the quality of effortlessness, especially through the breath. Let's cross the right elbow on top of the left elbow and either hook the thumbs or wrap the forearms and palms. Continue to relax the shoulders down while lifting the elbows to the height of the shoulders, just gently pressing the forearms forward, and then begin to activate your abdomen just a bit more. Shift your weight into your right foot, turn out the left leg, flexing the left foot, and wrap the left leg over the right, bending both knees. And the left foot can stay flexed outside the right leg, or if it's available, tuck the toes behind the right calf. Try to stack your elbows and knees down the midline of your body. Sitting lower can help you to balance easier. Now, steadying your gaze, tune into a few more deep breaths in Eagle Pose, Garu Dasana. Letting the eyes relax to bring that quality of ease. Now you might keep the arms in eagle or join the hands in prayer as you move into warrior three, unravel the left leg, flexing the foot, press the instep of the foot towards your rear wall, leaning the torso forward with hips leveled, creating a horizontal line through the midline of your body. Draw your right outer hip back. If your left hamstring or your right hamstring is yelling at you, you can bend the right knee as much as you need. Turn the left outer hip to face the floor. Bringing that quality of effortlessness, especially through the breath. And even how you practice the pose, choosing the variation. Let's step the left foot all the way to the ground, back to warrior one, and unravel the arms. Now let's shorten the stance from your previous warrior one, about one third shorter stance. I've already done that here. Grab a strap, you might use it. And with your feet, maybe about hips width apart, just not on a tight rope so that your feet can 
equally press into the ground with legs straight and hips squared forward. We're gonna prepare for pyramid pose while bringing the arms into cow face pose. So holding the strap in your left hand, raise the left arm, dangle the strap behind your back. With your right hand, rotate your left outer upper arm forward like we've been doing, and bend the elbow behind your head as you press the shoulders down, seal in the bottom front ribs, and lift your chin parallel to the ground. How's the breath? Reach the right hand beneath from below, catching the bottom end of the strap. Walk your hands as close together as you can. Some of you might clasp your fingers and then you can let go of the strap. Spread your toes, activate the muscles in your legs, your belly. And as you breathe in, draw your shoulders back and lift your heart. Keep firming the belly. As you breathe out, just hinge a little bit of your range forward from the hips, then pause. Press through the feet and inhale, stretch your sternum, the middle of your chest towards your front wall. Try to keep the hips squared. And then exhale, maybe fold a little more. So for a few more breaths, exploring the range of your forward fold in which you can still breathe well, have that quality of effortlessness. Opening the throat, relaxing the shoulders back. Pyramid pose or in Sanskrit, Parjvottanasana. You hear the word asana in all of these Sanskrit names of postures. On your next inhale, put a little bit on the right knee, lift the chest forward. Exhale, step to downward dog or lower into a vinyasa or cat cow a few times. As you arrive in downward dog, tune in to two or more deep breaths, slowing down the breathing and rebalancing in without. Notice how your shoulders feel. As you press the earth through fingers spread, inhale, raise your left leg behind you. Exhale, softly land the foot beside your left thumb. Spin your right heel down and inhale, rise to stand in warrior one. Squaring both hips to equally face forward. Bend your elbows apart, steadying your breathing, steadying your gaze. Let's cross the left elbow over the right this time. Either hook your thumbs or wrap your forearms and palms. Slide the shoulder blades down and lift the elbows to the height of your shoulders, pressing the forearms away from your face gently. Now begin to shift your weight onto your left foot, turning out the right leg from the hip, flex the right foot and wrap it over the left, bending both knees sitting. Now, if it's available, you could tuck the right toes behind the left calf. Otherwise you can flex the foot outside the calf. Try to center your elbows and knees down the midline of your body. Feel the breath in, smoothen the breath out. A few more breaths in Garudasana, Eagle Pose. As we prepare to transition as effortlessly as possible through Warrior Three. Decide if you'll keep your arms in eagle or join the hands in prayer. Unravel your right leg slowly, listening to your breath, and flexing the right foot, tilt your torso forward as you stretch your right leg back. Remember, you could bend the left knee if your hamstring is asking you to. Square both hips to face the ground, and lift the sides of the belly. Tuning in here for a few more deep breaths. Take your time stepping the right foot to the floor into warrior one. Creating a shorter stance about one third less than your previous warrior one. Unravel the arms. And with both feet flat on the ground, make sure you're not on a tightrope. 
hips are equally facing forward, legs are straight. Now you might want a strap here as we bring the arms into cow face pose. So hold the strap in your right hand if you're using one. And as you raise the right arm, dangle the strap behind you. With your left hand, spin your right outer upper arm forward and bring the elbow behind your head, pressing your shoulders down. Seal in the bottom front ribs and lift the chin parallel to the ground. Reach the left hand below, catching the bottom end of the strap. Walk your hands as close together as you can. Maybe you clasp the hands. Now spreading your toes and activating your leg muscles. Inhale, lift your chest. Just a little bit at a time. Exhale, hinge forward from the hips. Each time you breathe in, pause where you are. Root down through the legs and continue lengthening your spine down the midline of your mat. You might slightly tack the left hip back to keep the hips leveled. We're here for a few more deep breaths in pyramid pose. Parjvottanasana. Inhale, lift your chest, little bend in the left knee. Lower your hands and take your last vinyasa or cat cow. We'll meet in downward facing duck. Pausing in downward dog for three or so breaths. When you're ready, empty the breath, then walk or lightly jump to the top of your mat. Feet together, touching. Inhale, lengthen forward. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees together. Inhale, chair. And exhale to rise, mountain pose. Let's take a moment to step to face the wide width of the mat. Parallel your feet, and we'll bring the shoulders into extension, which is different from flexion. We'll bring the hands behind the back and either interlace the fingers, if you can, hug the heels of the palms together like this, or hold a strap between the hands to give you more range of motion of lifting the hands away from the lower back. So with feet parallel, breathe in and roll the shoulders behind you, lifting your chest. As you're breathing out, hinge from the hips and try to create the feeling of a flat back rather than rounding the back. So you can bend your knees any amount to do that. Let the head fall. You might shake it loosely. And as the hands stay together or on the strap, stretch the arms further away from your lower back and slightly bend your elbows to lift the shoulders up away from your neck. As you tilt your weight forward, invite your hips to align with your ankles rather than the pelvis being behind the ankles. So this is our cooling posture to transition towards the yin and restorative half of our asana practice. Bending the knees, inhale, lengthen your spine forward and lower your fingertips down on the floor or on two blocks. Press down with your hands and breathe in as you reach the top of your head forward, draw the shoulders back. Let's add a twist, place one hand front and center downward, raise the opposite arm, keep the pelvis still and then twist towards the lifted arm. Breathing in, keep reaching the crown of the head forward, drawing the shoulders away from the neck and breathing out, keep the pelvis still while you continue to rotate your rib cage in the twist. On an exhale, switch hands. Inhale, lengthen the crown of your head forward, draw the shoulders back, opposite arm to the sky. Exhale, begin twisting in that direction.
on an exhale lower both hands and crawl your hands to the front of your mat pivoting to face the front in a lunge from your lunge please step onto hands and knees all fours let's take a few rounds of cat cow and during it if you'd like to stretch your outer your inner wrists go ahead and spin out your hands to whatever degree you can feel a balanced stretch as you breathe in, glide your torso forward and roll your shoulders behind you and down, gazing up as you lift the chest. While breathing out, contract your abdomen, slowly dropping your head to round your back. Again, draw your chest forward, roll the shoulders behind you, cow pose. Exhale, lift the belly in, doming your back, cat pose. Try a few more cycles slowly to your breath as you listen to the quality of your breath. And then when you're ready, lean back onto the shins and just roll out the hands at the wrists. We'll give the outer wrists a stretch this time by making fists out of your hands and giving yourself a fist bump, keep that shape, and place the backs of your fist bumps onto the floor about a foot in front of your knees. So the elbows are not touching the ground, they're bending apart. As you glide your weight forward, find the amount of intensity you want to feel the stretch in and then relax the neck, relax the jaw. It might help to flutter the lips if you need. <laughs> or shake the head no. Or let out some big sighs with a tongue out, lion's breath. Plant your palms flat and let's come into single pigeon pose so we can bring some external rotation into the hips. Inhale, raise your right leg behind you. And then exhale, bending the right knee, turn out the right thigh and cross the shin in front of your pelvis as you slide the left leg straight behind you, lower to sit. Tuck the back toes and with your hands alongside your hips, lift your pelvis off the floor and tack your right outer hip back. Rotate your left outer hip to face forward until both hips are equally facing the front of your mat, your frontal hip bones that is. And if there's a gap between the right glute and the ground, fill that gap with your blanket or whatever prop that you need so that you can keep the hips balanced. Now, if your right shin is able to parallel the front edge of your mat, make sure that you're flexing your right foot to help stabilize the knee. And relax the back toes and as you breathe in lift your chest stretch the front of your torso little by little start to lower your torso forward whether on a pillow or a stack of pillows that you can bear hug or a block for underneath your forehead lying face down whatever you choose we're going to be here for the next two minutes before we switch sides so recenter on the sound of your breath. And can you allow each exhalation to bring more and more of that quality of letting go of efforts? A sense of joyful surrender into being rather than doing.
and start to lift your head and gently step back to your hands and your knees. As you arrive on all fours, you may like to lift the right leg behind you and give it some movement at the hip socket. And when you're ready, take your time switching sides. Inhale to raise the left leg back. Exhale as you bend the left knee and rotate the thigh externally, sliding the shin forward to cross the mat in front of your pelvis. Slide the right leg straight behind you, lower to sit. Now keeping the back toes tucked, frame your hips with your hands and lift your pelvis. Draw the left hip back, rotate the right outer hip forward and place a prop under the left glute if you need. If the left shin is parallel to the front edge of the mat, make sure you're flexing the left foot. Relax the back toes and inhale to stretch the front of your torso by lifting your chest. Take your time lowering the torso forward. Adjust your props as you might need as they may be different here for side two. Maybe close the eyes as you rest your awareness on the breath and observing whatever sensations are happening in the next two minutes of this pose. As you continue listening to your breathing and observing your body, slowly begin to lift your head and step back to your hands and your knees, in which you might raise the left leg behind you and give it some movement at the hips. Let's slide either a block or a pillow closer to you as you bring the inner edges of your big toes to touch, knees together or apart in supported child's pose, resting your forehead on the prop. Let your arms be wherever it's most relaxing, especially for your shoulders. And continue to tune in to your breathing to your bodily experience in this asana called balasana or child's pose.
observing your mind as well and how it feels to still the body. Allow a couple last slow breaths here before we start to move out. Take your time, slowly pressing your hands into the ground and gently rolling your spine upright. And please find your two blocks so we can bring the shoulders into flexion a little bit more. Place your two blocks on their medium height like this, wide across the front of your mat, touching each other. With your knees about a foot behind the blocks, straighten your arms forward and rotate your outer upper arms towards the floor, spreading the shoulder blades apart. At the same time, draw the shoulder blades down your back ribs, lengthening your neck. Keep doing those two actions as you bend the elbows, placing the elbows, your shoulders width apart onto the blocks. Press your fingertips into each other and tune into your breath. Step your knees back a couple of inches behind your hips. Trace your thumbs down the back of your skull, maybe down the back of your neck as far back as you can while keeping the elbow shoulders distance on the blocks lowering your head to your degree and sinking your chest to expand towards the earth, drawing your sitting bones back, firm in the belly so as not to dump the low into the lower back. We'll be here for about nine or so more deep breaths. When you're ready, slowly lifting your head, come up and off of the blocks. Let's put a block aside near the back of your mat and come on down to your back. As you lie near your back, bend your knees, step your feet on the ground wider apart than your hips distance. Now with the knees as wide apart as the feet, keep your feet where they are and drop both knees to your right side. Align your left knee down the midline of your mat and pause here. Just observe any feelings around the left side of your pelvis, lower back. If you're not feeling much happening, then you can add on to this pose. If you are, just stay here. To add on would look like crossing your right ankle just above the left knee onto your left thigh. Another way to add on is to raise the arms overhead, bending the elbows, hold opposite ones with the hands and drop the arms back while softening the shoulders down your back. So whatever variation you've chosen for this asana, let's tune in for about nine or so more deep breaths. If you find your left knee feeling sensitive here, Try flexing your left foot or uncrossing the right ankle from on top. Let's begin to step the feet on the ground again, wider than hips distance, release the arms if they're crossed. 
One lion's breath. Fully inhale through the nose, fill up the belly. Stick out the tongue, open the mouth wide, release any sound. <sighs> Close the lips again and slide the, or swing the knees to the left. Align the right knee to trace the midline of your mat. Pause here, observe, especially what's happening in the right side of your pelvis. Stay here or add on by crossing the left ankle just above the right knee, maybe flexing the right foot to help stabilize the right knee. You could also add on by switching the cross of the arms overhead as you hold opposite elbows. Deep breaths. One more long exhalation here. And then come back to center. Allow for one deep cleansing lion's breath. Let's take the block beside you, lift the hips, slide the block wide across the uh, mat to land right under your sacrum, which is the flat part of your lower back and decide if you'd like to come into supported shoulder stand. You can bring the arms really close to your sides, turn the palms up, ground the shoulders, tilt the chin back, bringing the shoulders gently into extension or to lift the legs up in supported shoulder stand. We won't be here too long, just about 10 breaths. When you're ready, with your feet on the ground, gently lift your hips to remove the block from underneath. Draw your bent knees towards your chest. You might rock in any direction. Let out a few more long sighs through your mouth. So our meditation practice today, I'm going to invite you into an extended Shavasana, corpse pose, often considered one of the most important postures in physical yoga, as it is that epitome of effortlessness. Before we do, let's help the body relax a bit. So set up in your corpse pose, however you want to lay the body to rest. You might just be flat on the ground or you might have a pillow under the backs of the knees for lower back relief or support. You might have a blanket over the pelvis for grounding support. You might have an eye pillow for relaxation support. Whatever you need, take a moment to place your body in the most comfortable lying down resting pose. We're gonna practice a short calming breath work when you arrive in that position. 
before we begin our extended Shavasana with a sound bath. So as you arrive into a comfortable stillness, I invite you to close the eyes. And we'll practice a few rounds of box breathing or samavriti pranayama in which we'll inhale for a slow count of four, hold the breath for a count of four while relaxing. Exhale through the nose, a count of four, and hold the breath for a count of four while relaxing. Let's try a few rounds together, a few rounds on your own. So prepare to begin by inhaling deeply through your nose, then clear it out through the mouth, then close the mouth and inhale for four, three, two, one. Hold the breath for three, two, one, exhale four, three, two, one, hold four, three, two, one. Again, inhale four, three, two, one, hold four, three, two, one, exhale four, three, two, one, hold four, three, two, one, last together, inhale, four, three, two, one, hold, four, exhale, four, hold, four, try two or three more cycles on your own. When you feel ready, let go of controlling the breath and allow your awareness to very gently rest on the sensation of the breath in, on the sensations of the breath out. Letting the breath draw you deeper, deeper into your sense of center, immersing in effortlessness.
as you rest a little longer, sense the way you feel physically. Noticing the quality of your natural breath, sense the way you feel energetically. And tuning into your mind and heart, sense the way you feel mentally and emotionally. Notice the effects of your yoga practice today. Take your time beginning to wake up your body in the most gentle and gradual way. Listen to how your body wants to uniquely move and stretch. Choose a way to eventually lift your body into a comfortable seat to bring our practice to a close. You might join your palms in prayer at the heart, a gesture of union. Yin, yang, feminine, masculine energy, lunar, solar, all within us. I'm bowing in, I invite you to recognize what you feel grateful for in this moment. Repeating to yourself what your intention was at the start of this practice. And remember to whom you dedicated today's practice as we close chanting Om three times. Let in a deep breath. Aum. Aum. Bowing in, the light in me bows to the light in you. Namaste.